Okay, let's talk about CSET math in 2019. Now, if uh, you're watching this video and it's another year, you know, these videos stay up there on YouTube forever, um, then this is going to be applicable to you as well. So, CSET, for those of you out there watching this video, probably are interested in watching this video, you well know, is a California Educators uh, exam. And the CSET math sections, there's different uh, exams. There's the multi-subject test, uh, then there's subtest one, two, three, all uh, dependent upon whether you're going to be teaching elementary um, or middle school math uh, or high school mathematics. Now, my name is John. Okay, I have this particular YouTube channel. Uh, my background is math education. I've taught middle school math, high school math. Uh, and I've, uh, I didn't teach in the state of California and I taught in other states, um, but I had to take the praxis exam. So I can tell you right now, I can, you know, understand that, uh, or share your, um, uh, concern on these exams. They're not easy exams, right? And if you're not concerned, then you should be concerned because you have to study to pass these, uh, tests. You know, you don't want to take these exams lightly, even if you, you know, are, you know, coming right out of college and you're like, okay, I'm just going to go in and take it. Well, yeah, that might work, but I can tell you, I have a degree in math. I have a master's degree and, you know, to pass and get my high school certification with the praxis took a lot of, you know, study, you know? Uh, so anyways, with that being said, what I want to do is offer you some uh, tips that I think you can find uh, helpful to increase your chances of passing like right now, you know, to speed things up so you don't have to kind of uh, learn some painful lessons along your journey. Now, before I get going, um, I do offer a CSET math course that can help you out with uh, the multiple subjects test. So if that's what you're taking and you like my teaching style, you can check that out. I'll leave a link in that description. And it can also help you out with uh, subtest one and two as well. So um, again, I'll leave that information in the description. And uh, if you like my teaching style as well, hey, uh, please uh, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, hit that bell notification. And with that being said, let's get into the CSET math and how you can, you know, speed up your chances of passing. So what I'm going to tell you um, is going to seem like common sense, okay, because I know I'm speaking to... Uh, an educator person on the, other, on the other end of this video, if you're going to be taking a CSET, clearly you're educated and, you know, you know, I'm going to be speaking or saying things in a very respectful manner. It's the way I talk anyways, but in other words, respectful in a professional sense. Okay. So I'm not trying to patronize you or anything else like that, but if math is not your specialty, in other words, maybe you're going to be an English teacher or an elementary teacher or whatever the case is, then, you know, you might want to you know, take some uh, suggestions for someone who's been doing math for many, 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 many years, not only teaching it, but, you know, helping people pass tests, etc. So let me go ahead and give you three quick tips that I think can really um, increase your chances of passing the CSAT more quickly. All right. So the first one is review. Now you're like, okay, what does that mean? Well, review first. Now, this is like not really a great tip, right? You're like, so what is, you know, of course I got to review. Well, no. A lot of people don't spend enough time reviewing first. They'll just start taking, they'll just start doing practice proms or doing that, you know, take a practice test or whatnot. Remember on a CSAT, you got to know a lot of algebra, geometry. There's a lot of topics, statistics, probability, all depending on what you're taking. You have to spend some time reviewing first. That's a smart thing to do, okay? Now, how do you review? Well, there's different approaches, okay? You can take a course, uh, you don't have to take the course formally, in other words, do everything, but you should find there's a um, different uh, resources out there, but you can take a course maybe like mine. It's all video based. We'll cover all the things that you need to uh, know on the CSET, or you can get yourself a book, all right? Different you know ways to, to learn, okay? But find yourself something that's going to be really substantial to review all the different things that are going to be on the CSET math sections that you have to take. Okay, spend some time reviewing just to get your mind back in a mathematical sense. Even if you aced uh, math in high school or maybe as a freshman as college, you still have to brush up on math. Okay, if I stood, you know, like I said, again, you know, math is my thing. If I stopped doing math for a year and I wanted to go back and teach something at the algebra two level or whatever, I'd have to 
brush up on things. Even if I'm going to be teaching next week on a particular lesson, you have to, you know, brush up. Uh, you know, so it's not going to be any different than for you, especially if you're math. You know, math is not your um, specialty, right? You're definitely going to have to review. And there is a lot to know to do really well on the CSAT. Now, it's not impossible, but you do want to spend some time initially reviewing. So that's what I would say, number one, focus on reviewing. Now, the amount of time you review, that's going to be totally uh, up to the individual uh uh, the current skill set, you know, if you just got finished with the math course, whatever the case is. So that's going to be up to you. But but again, focus on reviewing uh, first. All right. The second thing is notes. Now, again, this seems like common sense, right? Say, so, well, how does notes are going to increase your pants, uh, ch chance of uh, passing? Well, as you're doing your review, like in my course, I already have notes for you, but you should be taking your own notes or any textbook or review um, book that you might get is going to probably have little cheat sheet summary notes. You want to take your own notes. Now, as an educator or educator to be, you should know that note taking is essential for retention and focus. So, you know, you don't want to just read math. OK, this is the worst way to. Um, uh, or the number one, I think, misconception that people struggle with math, okay? They, they try to learn it by reading math, okay? You cannot read math. <laughs> math is an active uh, engagement kind of sport, right? You got to be doing it in order to get well. It's like uh, baseball or, or, or golf. You can't watch it and get better at it. So you can't read math, okay? You got to be writing it down. So when you're taking notes, you're going to be practicing Writing the symbology, you know, in other words, if you got to write something like a function, uh, that notation, or the cube root of something, you, you know, you're kind of using that kinesthetic part of your brain to kind of just get going. So don't, you know, during your review, don't be just watching videos or, or reading, okay? Actively be taking notes. So this is kind of like the, your kind of main foundation of what you want to do initially, all right? Now, after that, the only way you're going to really truly get better in math is by practice okay so here that's the third thing here now when i mean practice i mean a lot of practice you can't just do one or two problems like with the quadratic equation or, or something else and, and and think that you have that skill down so you're going to have to practice as much as you can as much as you can possibly practice i'll just say that much okay more practice the better you're going to increase your chances of pa uh, passing now so some of you might be saying, well, this is like common sense. You know, this is not really helping me out. Well, a lot of people, what they'll do, they'll kind of minimize this review or this, you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, yeah, I'm pretty good at math already. I don't really have to take notes. And they'll just start practicing. Okay. It's not a good way because if you don't really know what you're doing and you start practicing, you're going to get yourself confused. You're going to waste time and you're going to instill bad habits and you're going to get frustrated. All right. So this is why irrespective of where you're at uh, in terms of your math skills, review first, okay? Get that kind of math uh, brain going again. Take notes, okay? Now, how much notes do you have to take? Well, take as much notes as you can. All the various um, uh, t uh, concepts and topics that are going to be on your CSET uh, uh, test, okay? Uh, then practice. Now, when it comes to practice, I would suggest two levels of practice. The first is the practice of just getting the skill down, getting these subskills down that you're going to need to know on the CSET. So for example, solving equations, you know, graphing lines, basic probability. So this is where like something like a course like mine, where it's going to get, you know, you're going to have a lot of problems to solve so you can build the, these skills up. Okay, so that's the first level of practice. The second level of practice is actually doing practice uh, problems. Okay, on on um, uh, practice exams. Okay, so this is where the benefit of getting uh, a textbook that has uh, practice problems, or going online just trying to see if you can get practice CSET exams for your particular test is going to help you out. Okay, so that's kind of like the final level. But if you just go right to just Hey, taking practice uh, CSET exams, yeah, there's value to it, but you're, you know, you're leaving yourself wide open for a lot of topics that that they could test you on, that 
you know, you might see and you'll be like, ooh, I don't even know what, how, what, what an inverse function is or a logarithm is or, or parallel line theorems or whatever the case is. You'll be like, oh, yeah, boy, that was on there. And just because it's because you were able to do this one particular practice exam, well, that doesn't, that's not going to cover every single uh, topic that's going to be on or you could see on the CSET. Okay. So my suggestion to you is, you know, take the time. You know, increase your math skills to the level that you're going to feel really comfortable on the CSET. And you should, you know, uh, even if you're not going to be a high school math teacher or a middle school math teacher, you're in education. You know, you should uh, know math the best you can. OK, and you should go into in it for the like the long run. Right. So during your review, your notes, you can keep that uh, for you as you as you move on to the next phase of your career. But again, you know, as a fellow educator, you know, that uh, knows what it's like to get certifications. These exams, if you, ha if you haven't taken them, you know, are, are challenging, okay? But you can make your own story. You don't have to listen to somebody else and say, well, you know, I struggled, I failed, I took it three times, four times. You know, well, a lot of people don't approach studying these tests in the most kind of like efficient way. And that's what was the whole purpose of this video. So again, I'll leave a link to the description uh, in uh, this video if you're interested in uh, checking out my uh, CSAT math courses. And I'm always doing uh, tons of math videos that are going to definitely help you out on the CSAT. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. If you do, hit that bell notification. And if you enjoyed the video, if you found some value, it, I would definitely uh, um, be happy with a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. That's the only way I get better at doing what I'm doing as well. So with that being said, I wish you all the best on the CSET and good luck. Thanks for watching.